Hello everyone, I am Equinox Maiden, but friends and family calls me Suze. I am so excited to kickstart today's video as we're going to be covering the biggest event within the gaming community, the Game of the Year 2022 Awards. I will be joined by three amazing up and coming gaming content creators from XP Brigade as they share their thoughts on this year's nominees and their predictions as well. Today's video is not sponsored or affiliated with any of this year's nominees, so you will be getting our unedited, raw and honest feedback. Now, if at any point during this video you like what you hear and see, please hit the like and subscribe button and don't forget the little notification button as well because you're going to be getting a lot more content from these three amazing gentlemen. Without further ado, let's kick start. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. Good to be here. How is everyone? How is everyone feeling? Great. No, I'm feeling excited. excited yeah? For this. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Awesome. Br brilliant. Well, you know what? Since this is the first time your viewers and fans are putting a face to each of you, let's do a quick round of introductions. I'm Axios. Let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. All right. <laughs> I'm Axios. I have been playing video games ever since I can remember. Uh, ever since mm -hmm. I was living in Thailand, I used to fall in love with all the different games like Halo that I used to play on my Xbox 360. Even Kinect games that I had on my Wii because everyone and their mother had a Wii. Um, my whole, you know, taste in games changed when my brother came home one day and he told me, Man, you gotta check this game. It's called Skyrim out. It's going to be so cool. Mm -hmm. You're going to love it. Um, I forgot to mention, my name is Noah. Obviously, I'm Axios. Skyrim, that was one of your first games. How was that for you? I remember when I first played Skyrim, I had a, I was a big ball of emotions. And most of it was depression. So how was that for oh, you? <laughs> no, it was amazing. <laughs> it was my first ever experience like with a video game when it came to exploration. It... it as a like as a what was i like 12 years old as a 12 year old it was like okay. there's limit limitless potential for exploration and it absolutely captured my imagination oh, i love it thank you so much well thank you so much amexios i'll get back to you real soon about you know your living experience in thailand and also skyrim as well but let's get into slice and dice tell me a little bit about yourself hi peoples my name is slice and dice um Honestly, this all started in like a dumpster. All right. I found some PC parts okay. and I'm like, what is this? Like, this is pretty cool. Put that slap, slap that stuff together and just started going ham on the video games. Um, yeah. Since then, I just kind of saw PCs and just video games as an art form and as an escape. Mm. It just kind of explored different things and and just play with friends, right? So I've owned yeah. Xbox Sixties too. I've I've also owned like Playstations, and I've I've kind of went around even like an old Dr Sega Dreamcast, right? So it's like oh, OG, mm -hmm. all, right, right. So you know, a lot of people won't know, <laughs> don't know about Sega Dreamcast these days. But I know, I, right? Yeah, that's like I fell in love with games because they just provided this, just this escape in this artistry and it's like man this is so cool and then fast forward next you know uh i, I get out the marine corps and mm -hmm. i'm a dad now um okay yeah yeah like it it happened all of a sudden like she's awesome and but she takes oh. up so much time. but i still get time to play video games i take care of my daughter and play video games and with these great people um but yeah, that's me. Um, and and my name is Victor, by the way. Please, you know, I'm just excited to be here. You are living the dream. Being mm -hmm. able to be a family man and play video games, I swear a lot of people would kill for that opportunity. I, I have to ask, though, and tell me if I'm overstepping a line. You're in your car at the moment. Is, is everything okay <laughs> from at oh, your end of the world? <laughs> So I was hoping to avoid this, right? So <laughs> I'm pretty much in like in the apop apocalypse mode, right? So I'm in an undisclosed okay. in Florida. Um, 
apparently some 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 people thought it would be cool to just kind of knock power for forty five thousand people. Um, and it gets okay. really cold where I live. I'm talking about fifteen okay. degrees. So you know, packed up Ooh. in my family. Hey, I gotta yeah. go. You know, so that's where I am right now. And uh, I just I just wish I had my PC back. I, I just want my PC. <laughs> oh no! Well, sending you lots of love. I know, we really do hope you and the family are, are safe and um yeah, just, just just keep safe. And um I'll let you know if anything pops up in the back for you. So don't worry. The zombies, oh, we you. got your back. Yeah, no, but <laughs> living the but last of us dream. I know, I know. Well, thank you very much, Lice and Dice. And um yeah, keep keep safe wherever you are. And um last but not least, imagine midnight. Tell me a bit about yourself. Hello, everyone, gamers and people of the world. That's everyone us. united. Yes. I am Imagine Midnight. You can also call me Pablo. That's pretty much what everyone calls me anyways. Uh, as far as I can remember, I was a gamer since the day I was born. Came out <laughs> with a controller in my hand, and I was just destined to plug it in, player one, and just do what I do best. Sounds uncomfortable. Which is... <laughs> lay away and toil at all the challenges that come after me um i was a pure bread console player for the longest time loved mm -hmm. loved playing on the xbox the original moved to the xbox 360 played a bit of the xbox one when it barely came out um and little by little i slowly transitioned to becoming a pc gamer which became a huge transition for me because well, yeah. it's a lot, really. It's it's really fun to be able to just build a computer and call it your own and be able to have so many things you can modify with it. That's just the beauty of being a PC gamer. That's what brought me mm -hmm. into it. That's what kept me into it. That's what kept me as a PC gamer. So for the longest time, no matter what handle I had, I've always been a gamer. That's just been my thing. And I've enjoyed it even to this day. I work a full-time job, and I still in some way find the time to play games with the boys. Because why not? That's just what I love doing. So, without further ado, I'd love to say how excited I am about this opportunity to make podcasts and do awesome stuff with the boys. Just give our opinions and really just shed light on what we have to say. That's my huge reason to be here today, and that's exactly why I'm excited for this venture we have. So. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for your time and uh, long live gamers. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Yeah. Absolute, absolutely Arjuna. love it. I I do have a question, though. So I'm, I'm a console gamer um, and a purist, and I know you've been trying to get me into going into PC gaming as well, but I'm very interested. Mm. What made you do that transition from being a, you know, being born with a controller in your hand, but most likely going to die with a keyboard and mouse. What, <laughs> what, what got you? What got you into PC gaming? Because he's smart. <laughs> for the longest what? time, I, <laughs> no, I mostly played. For the longest time, I mostly played with friends on console. As soon as I graduated yeah. high school, a majority of them stopped playing console. So yeah. it became a point where the one game that I actually actively played lastly before i transitioned to bc was fortnite and everybody mm -hmm. loved playing fortnite when it first came out i'm talking season one fortnite that mm -hmm. just barely came out it was it, like the bare bones action everything was just starting to become fun and that was yeah. the game to play that it was absolutely the pinnacle battle royale game of its time of its time yeah you know but when I started playing that game, everybody that I played with, especially, you know, friends, were all on PC. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I was able to play with them on on, on my Xbox one at the time was because it was a cross-play game. Um, mm. Little by little, they've interested me in playing PC because most of the games on Xbox, uh, or, or just console in general, um, were limited in terms of uh, mechanics and uh, mobility and such. So... 
when it finally came to time, when I put together, slapped a PC and created it, named it my own, and just had it for myself, uh, I realized it was a whole new world of uh, different, you know, things that I could do with it. Just settings wise, yeah. um, mm. you know, frame rate wise, the oh, fact yeah. that I can tab between different things and play one thing at once at the same. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing thing to be a PC gamer, and that's the mm. one thing that I realized. Uh, when my friends got me into it, I could not turn back. I, I just couldn't go back yeah. to the console. Given mm. that I still have the controller and I still play controllers sometimes with certain games on PC, but I just, I can't have a console anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And you can't, you can't get away from it. Oh, no, yeah. you can't. You really it's can't. Best for RPGs. Best for yes. RPGs. Nothing like it. it. It's It's fun to know that most console exclusive games can also be ported to PC. Yeah. So, if I don't have a PlayStation, I could just wait until they port it to PC because why not? Steam has that. So that's the play- one thing that I enjoy, you know? Mm-hmm. No, what was that, Vic? Well, oh, you got yeah. PlayStation too. So that stuff is great. And you yeah. can use mm-hmm. it to talk with it too. So it's like, it's a jack of all trades, PC Master Race, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> can't well, help I, but I agree. Can Pretty hard to crank 90s in Fortnite with a controller. Just that's from what I've heard. From what I've heard. <laughs> or do a crazy flick well, on Rainbow Six, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. Well, challenge accepted, gentlemen. So, yeah. As I said, console purist, controller purist. But, hey, we'll get we'll get back into that a little bit. But um, before we get into this year's um, key categories and nominees, I, I have to ask, what made the three of you get together and create XP Brigade? I'm very interested mm. to, to hear your story behind behind that i honestly Man, think wants- vic should start yeah <laughs> look <laughs> this is this is gonna sound wild people right but i swear like i'm saying it took me it was a week a solid week of no sleep going to work slamming back like three nozzles just to like stay awake right and i'm i'm yeah. so reflecting and i'm like what is it like what am i missing right now in my life which is great that that I just I need I, it needs to happen I woke up the morning of when I pitched it to the guys hey let's build the channel let's get out there let's like we are already a part of the community mm-hmm. let's mm-hmm. let's be let's be known in the community let's do stuff let's just venture beyond this like wall that we all just sit behind right and I got the courage, and I'm like, "Hey, hey, Noah, like, let's 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 get on this, man. What do you think? We're playing Siege, and I'm just like, whatever. Let's do it. Let's meet up with the guys and the gal tomorrow. Let's do it, right? Um, and then it just ended up being being the same day. So that's where it started, just inspiring these my fellow people. Let's get into the community, mm-hmm. and then. It flourished. Yeah. Um, personally, as soon as I started just like pursuing content creation, which honestly has is barely even started for me. But as soon as I did that, I, I recognized that the best content that I can make originates from being with those that I love to spend time with. People that I just gel mm-hmm. with, people that, you know, give off great vibes. Both of these guys, you know, are of course that way. And my first video reflected that perfectly and knowing that we could do more than just every once in a while me posting a video with my friends in it Mm -hmm. i can't explain how exciting that is that the idea of an opportunity like that doesn't come every day and um, i was not going to give up that opportunity amazing Thank you for so so much for sharing it. Imagine Midnight, anything to add on to that? Not really. I just think that the fact that I'm very thankful that Vic, of all people, is the one to bring it up, you know, yeah. this, this whole thing in general. It's a thing we dream of, but it's never something that mm-hmm. we consider, you know, plausible in our in our current daily life until oh, yeah. we realize, wow, this is something that we can actually manage, yeah. something we can actually do. And just my opinion on all this is... This is something that I personally have, you know, dreamt of doing, which is starting something up solely based on the fact that 
we can bring our own, you know, our own little bits and, and segments based on how we perceive gaming to the mm-hmm. world. Yeah. You know, I can say something about a game and it's all, you know, completely based around my own opinions of it. And some people yeah. might agree, you know, some people might disagree. But the biggest thing is this is something that influencers, people on YouTube or people on, on Twitter or Instagram, you know, people that are into gaming that are consistently bringing yeah. out content can dream and wish to do. And if I can yep. do that, then I'm honestly getting one step closer to achieving that. That's that's really where I stand on it. It's just the excitement, the pure, absolute adrenaline we'll get from just moments where we're we're, we're gaming one second, the next moment we're dying of laughter over something, or we just wanna we just wanna fume about why something you know something annoyed us on a certain video game like Elden Ring or something. <laughs> that's what oh, no, it's no, all wait, about. that's actually her. <laughs> I was gonna point to me because I'm usually the one that starts raging over things, but no, you bring up Elden Ring. That's her right over there. <laughs> yeah, that that Im- that immediately triggers you know an asthma attack and everything else in between. Oh, no. But uh, yeah. But yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. And for those of you back home, if you would like to check out the video that iMaxios was talking about, we're going to leave a link down in the description below. Check out that video. You get to see Imagine Midnight get hit by a huge cannon. I don't know why he was standing in front of it, but he stood in front of it. So yeah, I have very go ahead and bad, check out that video. <laughs> I have very bad spatial awareness. I, I don't know where I'm at, like 99% of the time, so... <laughs> With that said, we do want to get through some pretty big categories in here. So, gentlemen, again, thank you very much for being part of today's discussion panel. I am now going to jump into a category that I know for a fact that three of you would absolutely love and are enjoying the best multiplayer. So, for this year's nominees, we do have Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, Multiverse, um, sorry, Multiverses, Overwatch 2, Splatoon 3, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Imagine Midnight, I'm going to jump um, to you for this because one of, you know, how I got introduced to Slice and Dice and Amaxios is that you got me to play Overwatch with the two of them and you've been trying to get me into co-op multiplayer gaming, even though I'm not much of a team player. So, I have to ask you, what constitutes as a good multiplayer game what do you look look at or look a, for a good multiplayer game should have lots of content first off mm-hmm. and i will speak okay. i will speak more i will go more into detail about why good lots of content mm-hmm. needs to be part of the multiplayer game mm-hmm. two multiplayer needs to have just that multiplayer it needs to have mm-hmm. people playing together whether it be co-op against each other, or let's say everybody knows Battle Royale, everyone for themselves, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. just fun to play. That re- like even if it were repetitive, it would have that replayability that makes it enjoyable. Right. I feel those yeah. are what make a good multiplayer game. Okay, great. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, I do have a follow-up question to it. Is it important for these multiplayer games to be cross-platformed? Because as, as I mentioned in the mm. beginning, I'm a console purist. The three of you play PC. What if I wanted to play with you guys? You know, <clears throat> do, do you feel that in order mm. to be game of the year multiplayer that you have to be cross-platformed? What are your thoughts on that? That's this is pretty... where it gets very yeah. This is where it gets very <laughs> That is an interesting question. That is Man. a very interesting question. This is where it gets divisive, because if you were, let's say, to do cross-platform between Xbox and PlayStation, or even Nintendo, right? Mm -hmm. There's really no problem there. Everybody is on the same playing field. Joysticks, triggers, buttons. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing between those, all those consoles. There's nothing different there. So for most people, cross-platform between consoles would be the perfect match made in heaven of just what gamers really want. Mm-hmm. When it comes to PC, it's a whole different story because you can argue the fact that people on PC have, let's say, better aim than those on console. Mm-hmm. Most people right. can mm-hmm. also argue that certain games are built to be played on a controller compared to a, mm. a mouse and keyboard. Exactly. You can be incredibly good, for example, at a game where both can be used, controller mm. or mouse and keyboard. You can be mm-hmm. incredibly good at a mouse and keyboard game. But let's say a game like Call of Duty, 
in which a controller is heavily favored mainly because of aim assist. That's where mm -hmm. it differs. And most of the time, you can also argue that, let's say, a game like Rainbow Six, it's com played completely different almost in terms of not mechanics, but just strategy between console and PC. Those mm -hmm. two games, mm -hmm. no matter how literally how similar they are, if you're playing on a controller, you are at a disadvantage. But if it's played purely on console, that's a, just a completely different way of playing than you would on PC. On PC, mm -hmm. it gets incredibly sweaty. <laughs> and I know that mm -hmm. for a fact because I've been playing it for years. But I would say that if it came between console and PC, that would be a very different tune to go towards because most people would probably have complaints on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But when it comes to cross-platform on console, there's really nothing wrong with it. I would agree that it's probably the best thing that a console has ever get, been given, you know, cross, cross platform. And when mm -hmm. it comes to PC, that's just a tiny bit different. The only blessing is if you did have a friend on console that wanted to play with you being on PC, then yeah, that would be perfect, right? You would join us and we would play, enjoy a game given yeah. there might be, you know, certain differences in terms of how the game is played between a keyboard and mouse and a controller, but at least mm -hmm. you are able to play with but like at, Yeah, yeah. But, like, at the same time, isn't having more options more commendable, right? Like, mm -hmm. it, it, if you have the option... Like, and this obviously is very controversial because especially for games like Overwatch 2, there's uh, there's always a controversial um, take on this because of, you know, how much aim assist should we give controllers because, yeah. you know, mouse and keyboard has such precision and you have muscle memory, which you have a little bit with your thumbs, that's true as well, but... It's obvious if you took the 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 aim assist away for controller players in a competitive setting, nine times out of ten, mouse and keyboard is gonna win. That being said, you make a really good point in ask. Well, t to me, just asking that question because if you have the option, you know, doesn't that automatically put you a level above those that don't have the option? Because more options to play with more people is always better, in my opinion. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I definitely. Mean, as 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 gamers, right? Like, there's there's certain there's certain you know we have queues and we're waiting for teams to build up as oh, we're sure. as you're, and you know a lot of games. So I call it well, I wouldn't say Call of Duty. Well, Apex, for example, mm -hmm. right? In our pre in our previous experiences, like the queue times sometimes are just long, right? And there's probably two or three game modes that is great and it's fun and the occasional seasonal game mode comes in and it's, it's just great but then it goes away all right mm -hmm. and, and then just playing playing with with more players it's just part of a part of what we do we want to play with everyone however mm -hmm. to pablo's case in point there's a check and balance that is it's like the million dollar question how are how are, are, are we going to approach this like more uh war war zone 1.0 or one that mm -hmm. was notoriously favorable to controllers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's just what we. Apex I've is seen, kind of the same thing now too. Have seen like content creators, right, with a PC, like ditch their keyboard and mouse. Yep. Same thing with mid Apex. Sometimes, yeah, right. Mid, sometimes midstream, and it, <laughs> for me, like watching that's like wow, the imbalance is mm -hmm. real. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. It's a very hard question to answer. Personally, if I was yeah. to choose one of these titles, or at least predict which one of these titles I think deserves the spot, <sighs> probably have to go with... And this goes against everything that I stand for because the last few years, in my personal opinion, Call of Duty has not made the cut. That being said... Mm. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 has a bunch of problems. It does. It has it has some problems yeah. here and there. Oh, I The know. thing is, is name a multiplayer game that comes out now that doesn't. It's kind of just a fact of mm -hmm. life at this point. And I'll explain my reasoning going forward. That being said, yeah, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, thing, well, Warfare 2 
I believe deserves the title. Um, this time around, at least. It's 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 difficult because in in the in the category of like multiplayer games, right? I, it's just tough. It's a doggy dog world out there, yeah, right? I mean, look look at where Call of Duty like was at and where they are now, where you have plethora of skins. They pretty much shotgunned everything, mm-hmm. and it's Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Call of, oh wow, Call of Duty <laughs> lost its core. Like, identity identity thank you mm-hmm. like it, that it's that it's that hard they came back to the right direction yeah right they came they came back strong it's like boom we're going back to our roots right we're we're a military arcade shooter yeah that's it that's what we are and it shows and it's great and i love it proximity the chat problem. is the best thing that they've added in years thank you Yep. Whether it's trash talk or not, just the uh, option to actually talk to different people in game is so good. Sorry, I just had to say that. Yeah, no, and you know what? You you I don't I don't think a lot of people think think this, but when we talk about immersion in a video game, right? Outside of the visuals, outside of the mechanics, outside of the everything else, proximity chat really just sucks you in into the immersion of this game. Whether you're playing DMZ, uh, yes. which I haven't really heard a lot of proximity chat. I don't even know if it exists on DMZ. Oh, it but... does. Oh, it does. Oh, it <laughs> it <okay>. changes <laughs> the game, bro. But like actual going out to like on on Warzone makes a huge difference. I think why multiplayer, uh, you know, this category and and multiplayer games play such a huge part, especially now where we're moving into a hybrid world. I remember that, you know, when the image, when COVID hit and we all went into lockdown, I was isolated in my tiny apartment with my 85-year-old mom and 10-year-old dog. And the only thing that kept me sane and connected to the world was playing multiplayer online games. So, you know, it allowed me to connect with brilliant yep. brilliant old, I, you know, I, we wouldn't know each olden, other yeah olden the olden apex days were something yes. else that's for sure yeah, yeah. And, and that's how i that's how i met some amazing and beautiful souls is, is playing online multiplayer games but i feel that as we're moving more into a hybrid world setting it seems to be taking a step back and you know, what I feel very passionate about it is that we should not limit these multiplayer games to consoles where you have to have, you know, you in order to pay, play Overwatch 2 with your friends, you know, you have to download it on your on your PC. I think, yeah, you know, I, I do understand when it comes to shooting, you know, first person shooting games. Yes, a keyboard and mouse definitely, you know, gives you an upper hand. Mm. But should that eliminate your console gamers like myself where, you know, we would still like to participate, even if we're kind of going, look, honey, I did a thing. Oh, look, I managed to kill someone. I think mm-hmm. it's just the fact that you're playing with a group of people and you're still allowed to have fun and you're still allowed to feel included, whether it's, you know, with absolute strangers or with your best friends. I do have a live question um, from Aria Rose 92 and she asked, Hi, this is a question for all four of you. Well, what multiplayer game would you recommend for friends looking to reconnect with each other? So this came in through Twitter. Oh, that is a good question. And I I will answer that question with a pseudo question to myself. It depends on what type of, of game you're willing to put time into. Because if you want a game where you have to rely on a friend and you actually create relationships with each other, Rainbow Six Siege is a really, really good example of that. Because it's very tactical, and that is also a double-edged sword for casual gamers. I can understand a game like that is not for everybody. It's a split, you know, it's very realistic in that if you get shot by another player, you could just be out of the game that round, right? It's very, very difficult in that. But if you've ever played like Airsoft, for example, I used to love playing Airsoft. Having those moments where you have to rely on your teammate to get your back as you move into a small hallway while there's smoke going off and you have to, you know, 
protect your friend and behind you back to back. That type of stuff is priceless because that actually creates relationships, right? Um, another good example of that um, on this list is Overwatch 2. Overwatch 2 mm -hmm. is a little bit less like that because you have more... I would say you have to rely on more different people in a in a squad. It's 5v5 just like Rainbow Six Siege, but there's reasons why I, I say mm. that. But the main reason why I would recommend Overwatch 2 for anyone that isn't willing to just put in tons of time into a game is because Overwatch 2 is extraordinarily palatable for new players. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the art style, whether it's the gameplay, it has a very high skill ceiling, but... It comes across as like watching a Pixar movie. Mm -hmm. Awesome. No. Yeah, Slice and Dice, you. What would your recommendation for Aria Rose 92? I may be a little bit like, all right, I'm going back to my childhood, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm playing Black Ops 2, all right, with the boys. And we're just, we're just, we're, we're playing a game that doesn't, it doesn't necessarily need as much skill or like in-game communication as like Rainbow Six Siege, mm -hmm. where, you know, you're, you're, you're listening to something in the background, you're doing something, uh, I, I would rather say like casual, arcade. yeah, casual, but you're on game chat, right? And you're having fun. You're having these cool little moments where it's like, dude, I just stuck this dude from across the map. Hey, by the way, like, how was your last summer? Like, you, you know, you, you, you're playing this together and you're having mm -hmm. fun and you're making jokes and it's a lot less tactical, a lot, a, a lot less, um, it requires less communication in game because you have to coordinate if you want to win, right? Mm -hmm. in, in games like Call of Duty, is you, win or lose, it doesn't matter. You're having a great time. Now, Warzone, the first Warzone, can't do that. Call of Duty is too small, you're just getting shot up all the time. Warzone 2.0, much bigger map. There, I find myself with Noah and a lot of the other guys, you know, Pablo and, and all our other friends. Um, we find ourselves having some downtime and we're just finding cool stuff. We're doing cool stuff. Like, hey, I just went underwater. This is cool. I can yeah. actually shoot body coming up from mm -hmm. the water. Tactical. So cool. So cool. And be, yeah. And be talking about life. It's mm -hmm. like, hey, man, like, what'd you do yesterday? How was work? I'm like, did you exactly. eat? Go eat. Come on. <laughs> so right. stuff, my recommendation find something that is arcade it's fun to do and get on game chat and just talk about life mm -hmm. love it imagine midnight quickly for you in my mm -hmm. personal opinion i'd have to go for overwatch mm. i would agree with okay. what noah said it's very caterable to newcomers yeah because it's one of those games where even if you're not really good at it there's a character for everyone. True. <clears throat> or somebody like, let's say, comparing it to an old game like Team Fortress 2, where if you were somebody who enjoys playing, let's say, the demo man, you'd get into Junkrat. Because Junkrat mm -hmm. is exactly mm -hmm. that. Shoots volleys of explosives that deal incredible amounts of damage from a distance. If you like beefy characters, like Thanks. somebody like reinhardt who has a hammer yeah. you could just swing around crazily like a like a maniac orissa mains rise up it's orissa. <laughs> or if you want to be orissa who got you know reworked in overwatch 2 if you love getting shots a lot you know and being able to uh do a majority of the damage and just be kind of like a menace on the battlefield then you're a dps mm -hmm. you know you can be a mccree main you can be a soldier main you can be a hanzo main you know uh, it really caters to anybody. And that's why I feel like when the game like Overwatch, originally Overwatch 1, now Overwatch 2, it still caters to newcomers because they can slowly adjust themselves and get used to a character that they enjoy playing and slowly just get better at the game as time progresses. Love it. Thank you so much. And um, from me, you know, if my partner's too busy for me and, you know, I don't feel like being abused by the Elden Ring community, I go for <laughs> Red Dead Online. I mean, you know, nothing nothing beats running around in, um, on your horse and mm. doing a bit of fishing with your friends. Always a great way to pass the time. So, yeah, but um, gentlemen, thank you so much for that. That definitely, I can see how the three of you are so passionate about um, you know, multiplayer online games. I really am excited to see you open up the uh, 
um, XP Brigade community and inviting more people to play with you. So good on you oh, for yeah. that. Come on in. All righty. Let's go to the next category, which I think plays a huge, which has come a long way as well in the gaming community, the best narrative. You know, honestly, gone are the days where, you know, when, when you want to start a game, you just hit the start button and jump straight in. Storytelling is becoming a huge part or playing a huge role in player immersion. And I have to admit that this year's nominees did a pretty impressive job. Um, we have a Plague Tale Requiem, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, and Immortality. So, um, I'm Axios. I do know that you love a game with a good storytelling, and you you mentioned that in the beginning. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on this year's uh, nominees? This year, honestly, has a lineup that probably would rival best lineup of any year to be honest we have they're mm -hmm. all honestly so unique and they all tell such interesting stories in very very different ways um yeah. you have you have a couple of them that tell them in similar similar ways like uh plague tale uh god of war and uh, horizon forbidden west yeah and then you have the absolute out of pockets which like elden ring and immortality immortality is mm -hmm. is crazy immortality is a such a strange like uh, experience from what i've seen i haven't been able to play it it's essentially like you're you are the detective figuring yeah. out who is the murderer or the backstory in an actual movie that's an i think it's called an fmv if i'm not mistaken it's where they actually take real mm -hmm. footage of people very interesting i've yeah. never really done one of those before so i'm gonna stay away from that a bit because I, I i can't really say too much on that but plague tale i played the first one through and through great game honestly it's like rags to riches story from the trip from the uh from the the studio behind it right super mm -hmm. indie title um and they made something phenomenal with the you know with the assets that they had they made a game that was like 99 percent triple a with just like not even half the people that they needed for a game that size elden ring is my game right i love elden ring when i sat down in that game the exploration that i yeah. felt in that game was you know i hadn't felt since i had sat down with skyrim when i was 12 years old i swear I, it was amazing that being said and this is a very controversial discussion because people are wondering why Elden Ring is nominated for Best Narrative. I don't yeah. think I have to tell anyone that knows about Souls games is their story is almost absent. It You have to find mm -hmm. the story yourself yeah. if you want to. And this is why it is such a very controversial decision to implement it or even, in this case, nominate it for Narrative. And I honestly, I agree. I love the game so much, but from someone who has loved stories for my entire life and will continue loving them forever, a narrative is very, it's not loose. It's not as loose as people would want it to be. And I know I've seen all the videos online. I, I've watched all the videos of people's takes on why Elden Ring is nominated. I do understand. I get it. But mm -hmm. narrative is something specific in this case, and I don't think Elden Ring really fits in that that place. It just doesn't. The story for Elden Ring is phenomenal. It's like Greek mythology. It's so rooted yeah. in fantasy. There's otherworldly stuff. It's awesome. But it's not really a narrative. It's there if you want it. And that's not really what these type of stories, I think, should be nominated for. Yeah. God of War Ragnarok there's really not much to say about that. That game is as polished as polished can be, to be honest. Um, Horizon Forbidden West is... It's hard for me to talk about that game because I played the first game, but I didn't finish it. I didn't I didn't honestly play even all that much about it. I, I played probably like 25, 30 hours of that game, and I know all of the Horizon <laughs> fans are just going to be yeah. coming after me. 
because I don't know. The characters didn't really tug at my heartstrings. I wasn't all that attached. And from what I have seen about Forbidden West is although the game, and to its credit, I honestly think it is the most aesthetically pleasing game on this list. That's right. I do think it is more beautiful than God of War Ragnarok. It tops them all visually. That being said, when it comes to cutscenes, when it comes to story, when it comes to characters in those cutscenes, it kind of looks like people are reenacting a stage play to me. It, it yeah. doesn't really feel as cinematic as I think they wanted it to feel. And it kind of feels like it lost... It, it, it's not succeeding in what it's trying to do. Because it it's trying to be cinematic, but it's a video game. So it's trying to give you choice. And in the end, it just doesn't really deliver a actual, you know, a um, compelling. It doesn't really get, deliver compelling, well-paced story. So I'm honestly... Oh, it's such a hard choice. But I'd probably... I probably have to predict for uh, God of War Ragnarok. I'm going to be honest. And I am going to hold my tongue on that because, um, <laughs> yeah, I have very I have very strong feelings about uh, the Ragnarok. I do want to touch on something that you mentioned, and I want to throw this out to the three of you. I always felt that in order to be nominated for Best Narrative and to ultimately win that category, you have to tug on the heartstrings of emotions. Whether it's anger, sadness, happiness, or falling in love with the character that you're playing, I always feel that that ultimately would constitute as being a game that truly had a great story to it. What are your three, um, your thoughts on that? Boy. Um, look, so God of War Ragnarok, I know you have some reservations. It's cool. <laughs> but, you know, playing God of War in the past and watching gameplay on this God of War Ragnarok, right? I can say, like, the scenes where I don't even know how to describe it. Like, it just, it sucks me in. Like, you can really feel the anger, like... Or the sorrow, some of the moments when he's talking about um, his 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 son's mother, mm -hmm. right? When mm. up here and there, like you can you can just they do they they do a really good job in like yeah heartstring like oh man like he's re he's really sincere mm -hmm. maybe there's something deeper there and it makes you kind of think uh, that's what I think I I, th I think God of um, God of War does a great job of it to be honest. Mm -hmm. okay thank you um imagine midnight how about you i mean you've seen me at my worst playing a game for 10 15 minutes and then crying my heart out because that one random npc died so what are your thoughts around you know narrative emotions stories. being tied yeah emotions being tied to have being a game with good narrative i think a game with good narrative is very important in today's gaming society and this is why because a majority of the games that are made now <clears throat> lack a good story mm -hmm. um i can i can speak on behalf of let's say a game like modern warfare 2's the remake you know story compared to the original modern warfare 2 game that came out like what 20 2014 2013 or some somewhere around, around mm -hmm. along those lines um the original modern warfare in terms of a narrative story was phenomenal mm -hmm. the complete shock of playing a level like no russian was insane right. for its time you know mm -hmm. um, and then going on controversial to realize, oh, yeah. yeah controversial definitely but going on to a to a moment where you're playing these lovable you know i wouldn't say lovable because they're all like cold-hearted <laughs> but <laughs> i would say characters that you can kind of be like hey that guy's badass you know a character like ghost and right. then all of a sudden saying that before you know it this character that you really liked a lot is just wiped out from the story because somebody yeah you, you know and that's like a big thing coming into the remake nobody really dies you know so it's just kind of like doesn't have that impact of like, it doesn't have that impact i mean i'm i'm happy they get to go into the third you know modern warfare and we get to see more of them mm -hmm. but compared to the original modern warfare 2 i feel like the original did 
way better in being a narrative story. I think it's exactly what made it a good game. But it doesn't um, but pull on your heartstrings. It doesn't really pull much yeah. emotionally. Yeah. It didn't do you much had no me. heart. You had no heart then, because I think I cried like what three times watching Imagine Midnight play. <laughs> uh, and then yeah. one of them was over the fact that she thought everybody died in one of the missions. It turns out it was just like that happened uh, months prior. <laughs> and I was, I was bawling my heart out. Oh, I was no. like, no. It's like, oh, no, like, no, everyone no. died. Then no, you need to just... play the original because, oh, my oh, you're gosh. Yeah. You're going to lose you have. your have. from the original. Oh, my gosh. I have. I have. I the cried. My mother... Yeah, Shepherd. I cried. My mother. My... My mother cried. I think the dog cried at some point as well. We all cried. So I'm. Mm -hmm. That's what but made yeah. the original amazing. Just, just out of this whole conversation, my uh, to be truthfully honest, I am not a big story guy. Right, I'm, I'm about, you know, for FPS shooters, like really getting into the tactical weeds. But just after this exchange, like I really have this need to just get into that part of gaming, which I think that's what we're all about. Right, just mm -hmm. interesting other yeah. people, things, oh, yeah. um, and I can say that when I when I get back out of this, you know, apocalyptic whatever the hell I'm in, um, I can say that I want to try some of these games. Bro, you gotta play mm -hmm. Mass Effect. It's my favorite game. Yeah, see you mm -hmm. at three in the morning playing that game. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I that's know. because I mod it. That's because I mod that game. Oh. I made I made mods for that game. But and that is the Max only game Joss I've... Gets, has some great mods. You have some great mods out there. I'm Thank you. Joss, so I have definitely... one mod. Well, hey. That's the only game I've ever reach... cried at, though. That's the only game I've ever cried <laughs> at was Mass Effect because I have so much of myself invested in such a phenomenally crafted story. Very interesting discussions around um, the last categories and... I really want to get into the game of the year. I mean, that's why we're all here. That's what the huge, you know, the entire gaming community is looking forward for. So this year's nominees are Plague Tale Requiem, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Stray, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Now, I'm going to do things a little differently here. I would like to go nominee by nominee and get your insights and your inputs on it. So... Let's start with a Plague Tale Requiem. What is, you know, let, let's keep this short, simple, but straight to the point. What is everyone's thoughts on Plague Tale? Beautiful, mm. ambitious, um, intimate story. Um, out of all of these uh, games here, it is clearly the most driven when it comes to story and story. It only basically the whole game is its story mm -hmm. and how how it is written narratively uh elden ring oh boy elden ring um vast that's it vast polished it does the impossible god of war ragnarok yeah. is more of greatness it's just more it's just more greatness the first one was wonderful. This 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 one is wonderful. Um, Horizon Forbidden West. It it has incredible scenery. It incredible visuals. It has so much uh, uh, artistry behind it. It's clearly so many talented people were behind that game. It is clear why it is on this list. Stray, the underdog that could a phenomenally gorgeous game absolutely deserves the recognition for being nominated for game of the year and then xenoblade yeah. chronicles 3 not really my cup of tea but i understand that it is absolutely everything to some uh to some people and i understand that yeah yeah very well perfect imagine midnight you're next okay so on behalf of uh speaking of narratives in terms of let's say last uh title or, or last topic we were on for best narrative plague tale um from what i've seen definitely a very visually remarkable game um and it just looks the part it just it from from literally like just mm -hmm. the first game alone to this one it would basically fall under a triple a category almost, oh yeah you know yeah. very oh, easily yeah. so i think that makes it a very strong uh contender yeah and uh, mm -hmm. I think 
um, against powerhouses like Elden Ring and God of War, um, I think it would do good story-wise well enough and visually to be considered Game of the Year. Now, Elden mm-hmm. Ring, um, as much as I love the game, as much as I really enjoyed it, I think it deserves Game of the Year, not just mainly based on how amazing of an experience it was to play that game and how huge the world is based on Elden Ring and how beautiful it is at some yeah. points. It's just the fact that it achieved what most AAA titles cannot nowadays, which is mm. have a perfect game at launch. It yeah. has everything that it needs at launch. Given there are a few things that they patched here and there, but that's just mainly for like let's say the multiplayer aspects of the game. Or Everything about it. There's a bit performance. of performance. Yeah. Yeah. When it first launched. Yeah. And aside from that, literally flawless mm-hmm. when it first launched. It doesn't need microtransactions. It doesn't need anything super fancy in terms of like playability to make it you know, re- replayable, you know? Like, you can you can literally just keep leveling up your character endlessly, and that's what makes it, you know, basically, it's yeah. all from a replayability. And uh, in terms of God of War Ragnarok, for example, I, I, I haven't played it, but I've seen a bit of it, and I could see the appeal for a lot of people. I just don't know if it's really worth picking as a game of the year. Mm. I just don't think it's any better than the last title. I have not seen anything, nor do I know anything of Xenoblade Chronicles 3, so I can't say on my behalf of what that game really is like, but I'm pretty sure not really. Not that. really sure why it's on there, to be honest. Yeah, either. I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Dude, I don't even know what it is. Um, <clears throat> that's, I feel like most people it's... would be very upset with us, but... You know. Cool game, I'm sure, but not at this caliber right it it, it's a no it's a stunningly visually stunning game honestly and if you played the first and second one which i have and i'm a i I was a huge fan of the franchise visually stunning there's a great story behind it but i think what they went wrong with it was um and i was telling imagine midnight this you basically you you take three steps and there's probably 30 minutes of cutscenes. Uh-huh. So the entire game is just cutscene upon cutscene. I think there was that one point where I went and made dinner and I took a shower and I came back and the cutscene was just about to end. Oh my God. So, yeah. so the immersion gets taken away. And that yeah. ties back to it, what all three of you said about Stray, where you don't need complex dialogue for it to be immersive when mm-hmm. i played stray i thought i was a cat and i thought like a cat <laughs> i moved like a cat and i made decisions as i would think my two cats would would make mm-hmm. if i was if they lived in a world with robots but yeah i think xenoblade chronicles 3 it's it i i think it's more for that brand new player that just wants to they want to participate in a great story. And that's exactly what it is. It's a great, beautiful story that you get to participate and mash a few buttons with. But sure. Yeah. I so, see that. And um, yeah, and slice and dice, I've not forgotten about you. What are no. your thoughts and you know, go through the list? Look, so for <laughs> perfect honest, I don't even have my list with me, you know, because my handy dandy <laughs> darkness accompanies me. Um Well, you are forgiven, you're in the apocalypse, so you're I'm fine. In the apocalypse, right? <laughs> forgiven. But, you know, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of the games that, you know, nominated for she came of the year, I was like, I haven't played a lot of them, right? And it's like, yeah, uh, it, 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 I, I kind of beat myself up for it because I'm like, I'm missing out on, on so much where you know, I have my niche and it's like, okay, cool. It's time to venture out. But I got to say like strength. I, I, I don't know. It mm. really, it really just stuck with me. Um, the visuals, mm. gameplay, this per- mm. this perspective, it's new, and I'm attracted to that new, unknown, right? At straight for uh for game of the year, it's gonna just be my pick, just hands down. Mm. Um, yeah, not entirely because I don't know the other games like that, probably just a <laughs> smidget, <laughs> but because genuinely it isn't, it would be an awesome title to give straight. 
Especially if it's indie. Yeah, yeah for sure. I realized that I hadn't or I hadn't indie. said my pick yet. I was going to wait until the end, but if we're all saying our picks right now, I got to go. It's a it's an extraordinarily hard hard thing to choose between all these wonderful games, but I have to go with Elden Ring. Elden Ring yes. is just so much endless polish. There's polish in all of these games, but Elden Ring, there hasn't been a game that has just absolutely floored me like Elden Ring has. Finding that elevator in the forest and going down, and it just keeps going down and going down and going down. You're like, how far is this thing going to go? And then it opens up on this underground world of just starlight. I just was absolute. My jaw actually dropped while playing it. I haven't yeah. experienced that in any other, any one of these other games. They're great, but Elden Ring takes the cake for me. And you tell me this That's now, not earlier when I want to go. Oh, like, I'm, you tell me this now, and I'm not interested in playing the game. Come on, man. <laughs> it is it is a beautiful game. I think all three of you know that I'm in a very toxic, abusive, emotionally damaging relationship with Elden Ring. But there is a game that invokes motion and tested my skill as a gamer mm -hmm. and really got me immersed to whatever story. And I made up my own story playing the game, you know. It it is remarkable. It is a remarkably beautifully crafted game and you can ultimately create your own story if you decide that i don't want to go through the direction where everyone's telling me to i'm going to oh, go yeah. on my own little journey and it encourages you, you to do so Ugh. yeah you go on your own little journey i think i i i wrote torrent my little donkey horse goat thingy and i go back and i play it i would either leave extremely disappointed and determined to go back and 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 kill that boss that I've tried 200 million times and if I actually manage to succeed I am celebrating and I'm going to go out there and think that I am the greatest human being that ever existed. Yeah. And that There's is no game on this list that doesn't that that makes you feel powerful <laughs> like Elden Ring does. Imagine midnight. I I see you thinking something. Tell me. What's going through your head now? I think I'd have to agree with everything Noah said. Or I think that Elden Ring, and that's personally my pick, right? Mm -hmm. I think Elden Ring is very deserving of Game of the Year. Solely based on the fact, I don't think we've seen a game like this in years. Mm. With mm. how, for example, how polished it was. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. remarkably insane the world building is on that game. It was legitimately yeah. jaw-dropping. Yeah. So a game that can it do is. that compared to the other titles where you just play it for the story, kind of like it. No, for a game like Elden Ring to do so much more than just tell an interesting story. It's that it Brilliant. makes you just odd. Odd. That leads into my next question for, for the three of you. You know, um, God of War Ragnarok is, you know, platform exclusive. It's mm. a PlayStation exclusive game. Is that inclusive? Are our studios eliminating gamers and players by making a game of or nominating a game of the year as an ex that is an exclusive to one singular platform? I I, sure, I certainly think so. Um, like to to Pablo and Noah's like great commentary on Elden Ring, like dropping day one on every platform yeah. it's truly essential to get yeah. great out to the gaming community right now like spider-man for example too that's that's another one from like sony titles that is just an exclusive and i was like yeah that's great but like you just excluded so many people from experiencing it even even yeah. though it is what it is but that's definitely is not game of the year material right yeah. it really it doesn't up. speak on behalf no. of what a game of the year should be, which is it's a game of the year for a reason because people love it. Mm. And if there's not enough people playing it, then why should it be game of the year? Right. Why should that it why true. should it reflect It's a good the... point? It's not just all critics. 
Yeah. It's not just all critics, yeah. it's gamers as well. It's gamers. If people are going to have it be exclusive, if a company needs to have it be exclusive, that's kind of holding back people from experiencing why it should be Game of the Year. Instead, so you have like a small niche group of people who believe it should be Game of the Year because they played it, as opposed to people on this side who have never played it and are questioning whether or mm. not they should vote it for Game of the Year. Mm. Yeah, I, I'll I'll There's play that. I'll play devil's advocate in this sense, not calling it out Sony at all or anything. No, I'm not calling them any bad names, but I'll play devil's advocate in this sense. But to start out, because to be honest with you guys, I agree. I do agree as well, and. I think Sony, I mean, there was a time where all of the different platforms had their exclusives, right? Yeah. And, you know, Xbox, the Wii, you know, Nintendo still does, of course. E but even Nintendo has crossover with studios like Ubisoft when, like, playing Mario and the Rabbids. Like, even Nintendo does that. And Nintendo is known for being very, keeping their cards very close to their chest. There is so much incredible stuff, incredible work that Sony does and puts into their games. Mm. But I can't help but agree with you guys in that all of those experiences are regulated to someone buying a console with Sony's name on it, mm. right? And I just, I understand why. And, and everyone was that way. I just think that Sony is a little bit behind the times and when it comes to that regard. You kind of have to move with the times. And if people are adding in more opportunities to play their games, I can only see that as a positive. Yep. I, I agree. And um, again, right, it, I, I think when it comes to game of the year, it has to be inclusive on all platforms. I mean... Um, I love Ghost of Tsushima, yeah, but mm. it was a PlayStation exclusive. It was a, it the most reason. remarkable game. I would yeah, have loved but, to. And when it won Game of the Year, I was so ecstatic. But then I had such a huge demographic of friends who were Xbox mm. and PC gamers, and they kind of went, oh, Suze, I, I can't relate. I can't yeah. play, and I'm not willing to go out and buy a PlayStation to play it. And that broke my heart because yeah. you have now, you know, because that game is so remarkable. I replayed it recently and I cried all over again. It's so remarkable, but my loved ones and my friends cannot experience that. Because yeah. again, why should they buy a PlayStation just to play a game that yeah. I think is beautiful? Yeah. So for, for, for that reason, I think, you know, God of War Ragnarok has no business being in the game of the year category because again not everyone is able to experience it but the three of you are pc gamers and if it won and the three of you wanted to play it you you, you have to go out and get a playstation yeah yeah in order to I'm, experience it well you know i wouldn't say exactly that right well I, sony try to implement playstation now and you have to pay a mm -hmm. for that which again, further alienates gamers. Like, it's a bad yeah. execution in inclusivity given that you could have just released it to every, have it non-exclusive non mm -hmm. to begin. You know, yeah. you're charging more for PC gamers. Which, you know, there's a lot of them to just play this one game on PlayStation Now mm. with a DualShock. Come or, on, Sony. Not. We want to play your games. Let <laughs> us. We want yeah. to play your phenomenal, phenomenal like games. Okay. I would love to play Spider-Man PS4. I'd love to play Ghost of Tsushima, but right now I just I don't have the opportunity to, you know? And not to mention, PS5s are really hard to come by. We yeah. have systems that we've built ourselves that could play those games twice over, but, you know? Yep. Yeah. Hey. Exactly. And that's one of the big reasons why I am slowly transitioning into, you know, considering transitioning into PC gaming <laughs> as well, because I I personally, I personally feel that it's a lot more inclusive when it comes to platform gamings as well. Mm. But yeah, I guess it's unanimous Elden Ring, except for you, Slice and Dice, you think um, our need, dear kitty cat from Stray. We need somebody. <laughs> Come on, man. We need you well, to be different. We need that. We can't all agree. We can't all you. agree. Yes. 
Gotcha. Well, don't worry. My, my my two little babies, Eliza and Shelby, have voted for Stray as well. So there. <laughs> so you're boys. you're yeah you you will be their favorite content creator out of the out of the three of you. So no. <laughs> with that with that said, gentlemen, I do know that I have taken up a lot more of your time than what was intended. I do want to thank each of you for sharing your thoughts, your views and your ideas when it came to this year's nominees. I am very excited to see what um, XP Brigade is going to start coming up with when it comes to inclusive gaming, especially for, for those of us who are very new into the gaming community and we're all we're looking to get back into it. So before I let the three of you go, do you have any parting messages for our viewers back home and also, you know, your new subscribers? What can they expect? Um, slice and dice, let's go with you since you're in an apocalypse. Wow. All right. So <laughs> call them out. Yeah, well, please. I have to. Means. I got to kind of, got to kind of keep putting that in. <laughs> yeah. So something I can say to the gaming community it's like, just go out and try it. You've seen here tonight where I, I've definitely feel like I've been behind the curve and I wrought a lot of really, really cool games, right? Because I just, I don't know. You get stuck in a bubble and just venture out and what, you know, broaden your horizon, mm -hmm. try new things, be bold and challenge the status quo, right? Um, and just be courageous, right? That's what XP Brigade stands on is being courageous doing something different and bringing the community together, right? And then obviously getting out of this apocalypse, man, is it getting cold. <laughs> um, so, yeah. We got to get him back inside, boys. We got to make this quick. I know. Yes, we'll we do. Soon. We'll be back. <laughs> Imagine midnight. Any, <laughs> any last parting words for your viewers and your fans out there? Keep being the gamers that you aspire to be. Because... I haven't stopped being a gamer to this day. And I was told many, many, many times, grow up, stop playing video games. That's for that's for kids. No, no, no. Video games is for everyone. You look online, mm -hmm. you look at Twitch, you see gaming grandpa or gaming grandma. On. There are these love very, you know, they're elderly yeah. people, but they play games. They love games. They enjoy it. Games are for everyone. So if you love playing games, keep gaming. Keep on gaming. Don't let anybody yeah. ever tell you you can't game. Just keep on gaming. Be the person that you want to be when it comes to being a gamer. Just game on. Love it. Thank you. I'm I'm Axios. Saving the best, but certainly not the last. Any last words for your viewers? What can I say that they haven't already said already, except for what I hope that this channel can achieve in the future, which is any and all types of content that you'd go elsewhere on YouTube to see in an individual channel, I hope that we can actually provide that here on one channel. Whether it's every different type of game you can imagine, we all come from different backgrounds when it comes to the games that we love, and we are going to absolutely love putting out content of all different types. So I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. And you know what? Honestly, the three of you have certainly made me feel part of your community. I know that I just got to know all three of you. Well, imagine Midnight, I've known you a lot longer. Um, but you know, I just got to know the both of you. And you know, you've made me feel so welcome, invited me to be a part of this amazing journey. So I'm sure your viewers will feel the exact same way. And with that said. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Again, I do know, sound like a parrot. I'm gonna keep saying that. Hit the like and subscribe button and don't forget the notification as well. Do leave us comments too on it, what videos and what games would you like to see these three gentlemen play? If you wanna see Slice and Dice gets his ass completely beaten in Elden Ring, go ahead and put that in, in the notifications. If you want to see me beat Imagine Midnight in Mortal Kombat, also put that in the comments. And you know what? We're going to get Imaxios to play in number two. So if you have some great <laughs> ideas for some amazing multiplayer and co-op games oh, that gosh. he can get on, don't, don't forget to put that in the comments as well. And we look forward to inviting you on this amazing journey that XP Brigade is going on. With that said, gentlemen, thank you very much. Good night. And I will see all three of you back when the winners are announced. Thank you.